Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Amel from City Skin Clinic. Today I wanted to have a little chat about treatments for forehead um, and frown lines. So as usual, I'll just talk to you a little bit about what causes these and the different types of treatments that are available all the way from what you can do at home um, to professional treatments. Um, and I'll illustrate with a few photos as well. Before I move on, if you're uh, new to us or if you're coming back and you're enjoying our content and haven't done so yet, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can hit the notification bell and that will tell you whenever we have new videos up. If you have any questions about frown lines or forehead uh, wrinkles, then uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'll also leave some links to our website that will offer some more information about the um, uh, conditions themselves and also the different treatments that I mention in this video. So forehead uh, lines and frown lines are perfectly normal. They happen to everyone and they are wrinkles that form over time with expression and as our skin ages it loses the collagen and the elastin which is what makes it plump and stretchy and smooth. So um, there are, with like all wrinkles in the face, um, there are quite a few things that you can do to prevent them if they haven't already set in place um, and also uh, ways that you can treat them if you can already see them. So in terms of um, the wrinkles themselves, uh, or they initially will appear as kind of uh, lines um, and in the uh, frown area, these are kind of, you know, when, when you're kind of frowning um, and you have uh, what they're called 11 lines um, and that you can see um, in the photo that I'm showing up. And then in terms of uh, forehead wrinkles, these are these um, horizontal lines that appear when you raise your brows. When these, uh, when we're children, we don't have these lines, but as we kind of become older, we enter our 20s onwards, and depending on how expressive your face is and how um, much sun exposure you've had is another thing that can accelerate skin aging, these lines may start to appear. When they appear, typically when people are in their sort of late 20s, uh, 30s and 40s, these lines tend to be dynamic which means they're only visible when you make an expression. So when you raise your brows or when you frown, you can see the lines. When you're not doing these expressions, then you uh, don't see the lines at all. If you don't do anything about these lines um, and they bother you, then the next stage is they become ingrained and then they become static. And that means that they're visible all the time. And this is an important distinction because it means uh, it has an effect on what treatments are better. So the way we treat these lines, firstly, prevention is better than cure. And even if you already have the lines and you need professional treatments for them, there are things that we can do to halt the progression of them. So one of the most effective uh, skin ingredients, skincare um, products that you can use is retinol. Uh, retinol uh, can be found over the counter, it's a vitamin A and also its derivatives are available. Um, even something more potent like tretinoin which is a retinoid and it's a derivative of vitamin A. And these uh, can, uh, when used over time, can smooth fine lines and they can stop the, prog um, the progression of wrinkles. Um, that have just started, but they can also prevent wrinkles from forming. Sunscreen and sun protection is another really, it's even more important than anything that I'm going to mention. It's really important for keeping your skin protected and healthy and stopping um, the aging effects uh, of sun damage, which is one of the main ways that our skin starts to age and to develop lines and wrinkles. So um, SPF and retinol are really the two big ones. Uh, things like vitamin C, it's great for the skin because it again helps even out skin tone um, and it helps kind of give a really nice glow to the skin, but it's also an important antioxidant. So it helps prevent some of the harmful uh, aging effects of uh, the sun on the skin. Again, um, vitamin C is, is really useful in that way, but not without 
SPF, so there's no getting away from it. So those are really the things that you can use um, at home um, that can help um, prevent or kind of delay uh, the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and help treat them. If you're, you have kind of active uh, lines and wrinkles when you frown, when you raise your brows, then treatment is usually the best way to smooth them. So whilst the product that you can use at home will help improve the appearance of lines there, they're not going to get rid of them once they've already um, started to kind of uh, look more developed. So in that situation, probably the most popular and most effective, in my opinion, treatment is Botox. So Botox anti-wrinkle injections, and I've got a link to a video that we've done that explains a little bit more about how Botox works, um, uh, that's uh, available to see at the end of this video. But Botox anti-wrinkle injections work by relaxing the muscles. Remember when I said these dynamic lines uh, they come up because the muscles are contracting and they're causing the skin to wrinkle. So it smooths these muscles and it relaxes them so that the skin above them remains nice and smooth um, so that when you do frown or you raise your brows, you uh, don't see wrinkles. Now, Botox has a bad reputation and in my opinion that's because it's often abused. So people sometimes think that they're going to look completely frozen um, or uh, and uh, you know it, it's going to alter the appearance of your forehead, give you overly arched brows, another one I've heard is a hollow doll appearance. All of these happen if you use a lot, um, kind of overdo the, the, the Botox um, and you're not mindful of where you inject. So at our clinic, um, Botox uh, injections, like all our treatments, are highly personalized. Um, and we take into account a patient's um, facial muscle size, their expressions, um, and their demands. So some people want to kind of um, not really have any movement at all, and that's fine, that's um, their preference. Other people want to have a bit more movement, and we kind of um, agree with them, sort of the, the trade-off for that. So, of course, because we're relaxing these muscles, you're not going to be able to do um, extreme facial, uh, pull extreme faces uh, like you might have done before, but actually um, we can definitely um, uh, smooth the wrinkles, but while still allowing you to be able to raise your brows when you want to or frown when you want to. It's a nice kind of natural um, look, but it also at the same time solves the wrinkles. Um, so Botox still remains kind of our, our most popular treatment for wrinkles in the upper face and with good reason too. The other treatment that I will mention, so for people who already have ingrained wrinkles, so it doesn't matter if they frown or they don't frown, we would still say Botox should be your initial treatment because that will stop the wrinkles from getting worse by relaxing those muscles but it's not going to completely get rid of them because those wrinkles have started to in, kind of set in. And in that situation, you would combine Botox with something like dermal fillers, and these are good if the lines are incredibly deep in that area, or something like chemical peels, microneedling, or even um, tretinoin and the new derm um, uh, home treatment kits. These will help resurface the skin and uh, help stimulate um, new, new kind of um, uh, basement membrane and smooth the appearance of these lines and wrinkles. So uh, really you have quite a lot of um, good choices for treatment. So there's what you can do uh, in terms of skincare um, and then dynamic and uh, static. So both when the lines are there all the time or when they're only there when you are uh, raising your brows or frowning, I would still say Botox for both of these, but if they're static, so they've already started to set in, then you may need an additional treatment on top of the Botox to completely um, smooth those lines. And remember, not everyone always wants to completely erase all of the wrinkles. Some people we get all the time who say, I want to improve the appearance of them, but I don't want to completely get rid of them because I still want, you know, um, 
I still want to feel like me or, I, I, you know, I want to show some wrinkles for my age, but not too many. And so this is why we take such a personalized approach for these things. It's a matter of um, goals, expectations, um, taste as well. Um, so here, here we go. Um, so those are my top um, sort of three um, approaches to treating wrinkles on the forehead and in the frown line region. So time and time again, these have always proven to be very effective and our patients enjoy them and they come back for them. One thing before I go is each of these treatments um, is, a, you know, they're not permanent um, with the exception. So skincare will improve your skin, but you have to continue using it and building on it and being persistent and, and that's just life. Um, the things like the um, Obaginuderm systems, whilst you only use them for a limited period, usually anything between 12 to 24 weeks, um, you will then still need to continue um, on a skincare routine um, after that to just maintain the effects. Um, Botox lasts typically on average about three to four months and then uh, needs to be maintained after that with repeat treatment. Dermal fillers can last anything from 6 to 12 months depending on the type of dermal filler um, and after that just um, if you like the effect we'll need to maintain them. Things like chemical peels and microneedling, usually a course of treatment, about 3 to 5 treatments are needed 4 to 6 weeks apart and then after that people typically maintain uh, with one treatment every 6 to 8 months just to keep the effect. Um, of what they they like or they can um, maintain the effect with a bit more kind of uh, advanced skincare something like tretinoin which is a prescription product and um, that's just a little bit more involved than say using a retinol um, so with that said it's really important to evaluate your expectations um, and what you want, not just immediately, but how you want to maintain the treatment going forwards. Anyway, that's uh, it for me. It's a little bit uh, short and sweet compared to some of our more re recent videos. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, leave a comment below. Don't forget to check out the links for more information. And please don't forget to like uh, this video and subscribe to our page.